Continue reading the Holy Gospel according to St. John with explanation by Blessed Philact. Glory to your Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Chapter 3, verses 14 through 15. Continue reading explanation. This is what I mean. Adam rightly died, for he had sinned. The Lord died unjustly, for he sinned not. Until the Lord's crucifixion, death rightly had diminution over the man. But since the Lord was sinless, what right did the evil have to put him to death? Unjustly subjected to death, the Lord vanquished the one who put him to death, and so doing freed, freed Adam from the death he deserved as a sinner. Moreover, consider the two chief passions which held sway over the human race, pleasure and grief. Neither could concur Christ when he became man. First, the devil attacked him on a mountain by tempting him with pleasure. Finding him invictible, the devil then employed the cunning share of grief to defeat him, if he could. Again, the Lord prevailed. No matter what kind of sorrow the Lord faced, the disciples' denial, the soldiers' mockery, the blemish of uh, bystanders, the devil found him to be unconquerable. Not even the grief of crucifixion could induce the Lord to hate his murderers, the Jews. Instead, he loved them and prayed for them, saying, Father, lay not the sin to their charge. See how he concurred, he conquered by the very means which seemed to accomplish his defeat. Therefore, the cross has become his exaltation and his glory. Chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Explanation. God's love for the world is so great that he gave neither angel nor prophet, but his own Son, and not one of several sons, but his only begotten. It were no small gifts had God given us an angel. For angels are his faithful ministers and servants, while we are enemies and ap apostates. If he had many sons and had given one of them, this would have been sublimed. But giving his only begotten son, he showed the love, showed love that cannot be surpassed. Therefore, it is meet to praise him for his goodness. The Arians claim that Christ is called only begotten because he was the only thing that God the Father created and brought into being, and else, they say, was created subsequently by Christ. To this we answer simply, if he had been called only begotten, but not son, your clever invention might seem to have something to it. But since he is called only begotten and son, it is clearly groundless. For he is the only Son, begotten of the Father. Recall the explanation I gave earlier of Christ's statement, that the Son of Man came down from heaven. It was not his flesh that came down from heaven. Nevertheless, because there is one person and one hypostasis in two natures, in two natures the Lord ascribes to his human nature the attributes of his divine nature. Here, conversely, he ascribes to his divine nature the attributes of his human nature. For the Lord says that the God, the Father, gave his Son over to death, although it was not the divine word that underwent suffering and death. Because God the word and the man who endured the passion are one and the same in hypostasis, it is said accurately that the Son of God was given over to death, for he suffered in his flesh, Thought not in his divine nature, and what have we gained by the Son being given? An immersed and unfundable gift. For all who believe in him, to escape destruction and life internally, the Old Testament promised length of days in this earthly life to those who please God. But the gospel bestows not any tran transitory existence, but life that is unending and beyond time. Glory to Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.